Hey guys, welcome back to another Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, it's going to be a quick one where I'm going to be showing you how to have a fixed camera in a corner of a room in which when the player walks into this room, they'll be looking through this camera and when they leave the room, they'll be back to their normal camera and I'm going to be showing you two different ways. So the first way will be just so the camera is there, it's stationary, it's not moving. And the other one will be where the camera is going to be rotating and always looking at the player no matter where they move about in this room. So I'll show you what this is going to look like now. So first off, I'll show you what it's going to look like with it moving. So we go in camera is going to be moving around and following the player like so until you walk out it's going to go back to this camera and then if I delete this part here if I just disconnect it we're going to show you that this is then what it's going to look like without that so it's just going to be looking at the camera like this and the player can move around in here with this camera and as soon as they leave we're going to go back to our normal camera like this so let me do this code and I'll show you how we're going to do this so our first step is going to be is to place in a camera in the room we want. So this is the room that I want the camera to be in. So when the player is in here, so I want the camera to be in this corner up here. So you can put this wherever you like, maybe actually even in this corner, completely up to you. Put this absolutely wherever you want. I'm going to put it in this corner. So what we're going to do is in the place actors up on the top left here, we're going to search for camera. We're just going to get this top camera there. And you're going to just put this in the corner where you want it. So you can see in the bottom right here, we have a preview of what this camera is seeing which is very helpful for us. So I'm just going to rotate this, move it into the position that I'd like it to be in. So I'm thinking that that looks quite good for me. You can see that is what the camera is going to see and what the player will see as well. So once you've done that in the position you want, we want to add in a box trigger. So for that, we're just going to delete the camera there, or the search for it, sorry, so we keep the camera in. And we're just going to drag in a box trigger from the bottom left down here. Once you place this in, you're just going to want to size this up to be the same size as your room, or basically where the player is going to be so this is basically where the player is in order for this camera to be active. So when the player is in this box trigger, they're going to be looking through this camera here. So set this up and scale it up to the size that you want. So for example, like I say, for me, I just want it to be the size of the room like that. So I think that is going to be good for me. Once you've got that, that's what we need to do in setting it all up. So now we have the box trigger and the camera. Now we're going to add in the codes and we're going to do this in the level blueprint. So to do that, we're going to go to blueprints open level blueprint here and now we can do this in a blueprint actor as well but I'm thinking that this just might be a bit better for you to understand so we're going to do it this way if you want I can do one in a blueprint actor as well but this is the method we're going for today so once you've opened up this level blueprint here what we want to do is just minimize this a bit like so and we're going to select our camera in the level like that so select this camera here go back in level blueprint and we're going to right click and we're going to create a reference to camera actor so we have a reference to this here and we're not going to use this straight away we'll just leave that for later then what we're going to do is we're going to go back into here so minimize that again select the box trigger go back in level blueprint we're going to right click and we're going to create a begin overlap so add on actor begin overlap for the event trigger box three that's what mine's called but yours could be just trigger box anything like that get that in right click and now we're going to get end overlap so these are going to fire off when the player begins and ends overlapping this box trigger so we've got those in there like so now for the other actor what we want to do is we want to simply just cast to our character so for me that's the third person character but for you this could be third first or whatever you've named it and what this is basically doing is this means that it is going to wait for our character to be the one overlapping this if something else overlaps it like an ai it won't fire off this code we only want to do it for our character so cast to your character on both of the other actors there like that now what we want to do here is we want to right click and we want to get player controller like so. Out of this return value we're going to set view target with blend like that and this is how we're going to be changing the cameras. So we're going to plug that into the begin overlap there with the target obviously being the get player controller and the new view target is going to be this reference to the camera which we got earlier. So you can put that in there. The blend time is how long it's going to take to blend between them. I'm going to leave that as zero so it just snaps to the other camera like you saw at the beginning. Obviously you can blend these and we're going to leave all these the same as they are by default. Then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this. So hit select it, hit control C, control V and plug it into the end overlap like so. With the target again being the get player controller. And this time the new view target is going to be our as third person character off of the cast. So what's going to happen is on the begin overlap, it's going to set this new camera in our room to be the one the player is looking through. And when we leave the room, it's going to set this back to the character's normal and the player's normal camera. So this is going to work perfectly. So this is all we need to do, basically. This is the code done for our stationary camera. So we compile, save, minimize, and hit play to test this. So we can see that if we go in the room, we're going to have that camera active. So we can see in this camera as we are moving about in the room. And if we leave the room, we go back to our normal camera like so. If we go back in, 
it's just going to work perfectly like that. And now I'll also show you how to do it so the camera is going to rotate and follow the player in the room as well. So it's just a very quick, simple add-on. All we need to do basically, right click and we're going to add a custom event. And I'm just going to call this one Rotate Camera, but you can name this whatever you like. What I'm going to do for this is move this up here and as third person character of our begin overlap, what we're going to do is we're going to come out of that and we're going to get actor location. So get actor location like that. And then for the camera, we're also going to come out of that. And then we're going to again get actor location. So we get in location of the camera and the player. Out of the get actor location of the top one here, what we're going to do is we're just going to simply find look at rotation with that as the start and the other one as the target. So what it's going to do is it's just going to simply find the rotation between the player and the camera. Then we just want to rotate the camera. So we're going to actually, I'll get another reference to the camera instead of going from this top one. So if I just disconnect that, get another reference to the camera so I can just duplicate this, control C, control V, down there, plug that in there, like so. Out of this, what I'm gonna do is set actor rotation. So we're then gonna be rotating the camera as well, plugging that into the custom event there. And the new rotation is just gonna be this find lookout rotation there. So now this is gonna look at the player constantly as well. So it's gonna rotate the camera to be looking at the player. But we need to actually call this as well. So what I'm gonna do is off of begin overlap here. So after the set view target, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call function rotate camera like so. Now what this is gonna do is that's just gonna do this once. So to make this loop, what we want to do is actually at the end of the set actor rotation here, we're gonna hold down D left click to get a delay. And we're gonna set the duration of this to be something very small like 0 0.005 like so. Just so it has time to finish this code before repeating it so it doesn't come up with infinite loop detected. Off the completed of this, we're just gonna again call the function rotate camera, like so. Now it's gonna loop this continually. Now what's gonna happen is this is going to call it when we first overlap and then it will continue doing that. So to fix that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up with a little branch here. So we're gonna hold down B, left click, putting a branch in between the start of the custom event and the set actor rotation there and we're gonna go from the true into the set actor rotation. This condition, we're gonna right click promote a variable and call this can rotate, anything like that, or player is in room, anything along those lines. Compile and set its default value to false. Compile and save that. So basically, if this Boolean is true, we're gonna rotate the camera because we only want to do it if we can. So now to set these, all we're gonna simply do is just off of these, we're gonna set can rotate to true off of begin overlap, so tick it, and then we're gonna set it to false off of end overlap. So now we're only gonna be rotating the camera when we need to. And now this should work perfectly for us. If we hit compile and save, this should work great. So if we hit play again to test this, we can see that we go in, the camera is gonna be rotating to follow the player, except it's not working how we want. So let's have a look at why that's doing that. So what's happening, I believe, is it's looking up instead of down, I think. So let's have a look at that. And so I believe the only reason it's doing that is I put these the wrong way around. So I put this one in start instead of target. So what you're gonna to want to do is the camera should be in start of the find lookout rotation and the player should be in the target. As obviously we want to be rotating the camera, so this should work a lot better now. If we compile and save, this should now work. Hit play, test this again, we go in the room, and now that works great. We're looking at the player and it's gonna be continually rotating the camera to look at the player and this works perfectly like so. If we leave the room, we should still be looking at the player now instead, sorry. So we should now have the player's camera back we go back in the room and we're looking at the player perfectly again, like so. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video, is we've done everything we wanted to do. We've set up a fixed camera in a room in which you can have it so the camera's stationary and doesn't move, or it will rotate and follow the player like so and look absolutely great. And as soon as we leave the room again, what's gonna happen is we're gonna get the camera's normal controls back. So you can see there we left the room and now we've got normal back, we go in and we're looking through this camera. So this works great. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.